The Bible says that I reveal secret things to my prophets. So there are prophets all over the world that whatever has happened in this world, prophets have revealed it. Prophets have disclosed it to the people. Now whether the people listen or not is up to them. That's right. So we have to do our parts and give you what the Lord is saying. And God is telling me to tell you, he said, think it not strange that as the exposure comes, he said, the blessings are coming as well. Yeah. He said, I'm about to fill your cups. Thank if you you're God. all in with me, he said, watch what right. I do for you in this hour. And the Lord told Thank me you, to tell y'all in my message this morning, he said, go, he said, fight. And he said, win. Amen. Go, fight, and win. And win. Go. He is looking for a Joshua generation to rise up in this season like never before. And he's looking at each and every one of us and he's saying, Joshua, I need you to go. I need you to fight. And I need you to win. This is the year that a new Joshua generation is going to rise up. <laughs> Go with me to Joshua 1, and I'm gonna be quick. I'm gonna read to you from the NIV version. It says, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses is aid. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I'm about to give to them, to the Israelites. I will give you every place where you set your foot, as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon, and from the great river, the Euphrates, all the Hittite country, to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Yes, be God. strong yes. and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore Amen. to their ancestors to give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid and do not be discouraged for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. So Joshua ordered the officers of the people, go through the camp and tell the people, get your provisions ready. Three days from now, you will cross the Jordan here to go in and take possession of the land the Lord your God is giving you for your home. If I had to give you another word prophetically, Joshua, arise, for you are about to win. Yes, good, good. Amen. God is looking for the Joshua generation to rise up and represent the kingdom, to tap into Canaan, which is the land that was promised to the Israelites, a land born with milk and honey. But the Lord is saying that I am pouring milk and honey for those that are surrendered, those that are ready, and those that are determined. It is a go season. It is a fight season, That's right. and it is a winning season, says right. the Lord. When he gave me this in these scriptures, he took me to the go part. I love it. If we go to verse 2, the go, when he was dealing with the Joshua generation, he was telling Joshua to go. Go is where we see in verse 2. He said, my servant, Moses, my servant is dead. Now then you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land. He said, I need you to go and I need you to cross something. Come on, y'all. And then at the next part, when I say fight, the fight part came. He let him know that just as surely as you go, 
just as surely as you are obedient to what I told you, the fight, he says, he said, no one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. He said, as I was with Moses, come on, somebody, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Just like I was with Moses, I'm going to be with you. But the first part of it is what you got to do? Go. He said, because as you go, he said, blessings are going to follow. He said, and in the wind part, he said, in the wind part, he said, be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land that I swore to the ancestors to give them. This is how he's going to win, though. He said, keep this book of the law always mm, 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 on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Now, what the last part say? This is where the wind come in. Because if you do that, then what's going to happen? Then you will be prosperous and you will be what? Successful. So God is telling the Joshua's in this house today, go Joshua. Fight Joshua and win Joshua. There is a Joshua anointing that is being released in 2024. Y'all got to flow with me on this because God is saying, I'm releasing a Joshua anointing like never before because I need some people to go. I need some people to be bold enough to fight. And I need some people to understand that if they go and they fight, they're going to win because they're doing it according to my word. They're doing it according to my way. And they're doing it according to my will. And so we got to understand if there is a Joshua anointing, we got to understand what the Joshua anointing consists of. You got to understand that the Joshua generation has to be able to do certain things. The Joshua generation, number one, y'all take notes so we can get out of here. Joshua had to let go of the old <laughs> so he could embrace the new. Uh -huh. Hashtag all in. The Joshua mindset is, I'm going to learn from my past, but I ain't going to let my past hinder my future. Come on, somebody. See, Joshua understood. I love this. When we go back to the first scripture, it said, now my servant Moses had died. See, Joshua understood that the old was gone. Joshua was a mourning more, more time than he was supposed to mourn. He understood that something shifted when Moses had died. There are some things in your life that God is saying they have there's some Moses is in your life God is saying they have to die they have to fall off for you you gotta let it go because you can't take <laughs> this, this, this old stuff into hey, a new hey, territory hey, hey, he said cause no I'm doing a new thing think it not strange that you're being convicted not condemned he said think it not strange that you're being convicted in this hour like never before because there is a Moses that's trying to die off of your life there is a Moses Moses is trying to be free because God is saying you can't go into Canaan with you. So the Joshua mindset understood that I can't go into this new level thinking about old stuff. When we think about old stuff, we look back for a testimony. We don't look back to go back. We look back for a testimony. Let's think about it like this. When God told Abraham, he said, Abraham, I need you to go. He yeah. said, but I need you to let all your people your father's folk be gone. Moses, Abraham to, had to take a lot with him. <laughs> it was something about his past that he didn't want to let go of. And when he brought his past into his next level future, he found all kinds of trouble. He went through all kinds of situations. But here's the thing about the Joshua generation. They understand if I don't let go, God can't do what he's going to do. If I don't let go, God can't move how he needs to move. And so God is commanding some Joshua's right now to let go and let God. He is commanding some Joshua's to let go and let God. He said, "You, if you look back, he said, you better look for a testimony. He said, don't look back to go back. Ask Lot's wife why did she look back. If she could talk, she would tell you, don't do it. Because when she looked back to all the sin and the lifestyle that she used to live, she became stuck on stupid. She couldn't even move. She couldn't go forth in purpose. The Bible tells us she turned into a pillar of salt. And she was not able to go forward in the things of God. Joshua generation understood I'm only looking back for a testimony. I ain't looking back to go back. Lot's wife looked back to go back and she got stuck. Abraham looked back and brought something with him that God said let go of. And he understood that he opened up the door for the devil to wreak havoc in his life. So the Joshua generation 
celebration as we go into 2024. He said, you don't need to be looking back. He said, you need to be moving forward. Yeah, yeah, he yeah, said, yeah, just yeah, like yeah, I yeah, told yeah, you yeah, to yeah. let it go, let it go. Let it go. The next thing that the Joshua generation understood, they didn't dwell on the past. Right. They moved forward to the future. They also, the next thing, if you got a Joshua mindset, Moses made excuses. Joshua made it happen. Uh, Come on, somebody. Yeah, See, Moses' generation is gone. We ain't fooling with that generation no more. They couldn't even enter into the promise because Moses' generation made excuses. When God told Moses to go forward, Moses said, God, I can't do it. He said, I started a little bit when I told. He said, God, you sure you want to use me? Now, see, the beauty about this is when God told Joshua to go, Joshua didn't say nothing but let's go. You've got to understand that Moses tried to make excuses as to why he couldn't be great. Joshua heard a word. And after he heard the word, the Bible said he went to his men. He said, in three days, we crossing over. We Come on, somebody. Over. He went to the men, and he said, in three days, we finna make it happen. In three days, God is about to give us a new territory. In three days. See, when God told Joshua something, Joshua took it to the camp, and he began to prophesy what the Lord was going to do. When God told Moses something, Moses made an excuse. So the Joshua generation, he said, if you're going to move forward and men, this hour. He said you can't keep dwelling on your past. And he said you can't make no excuses as to why you can't be great. Come on somebody. Don't make excuses as to why you can't be great. He said just go and be great just like I told you to be. The third thing about a Joshua generation. Joshua didn't involve a lot of people to confirm what God was doing. You better say that. Hashtag he was all in. He didn't need everybody and their mama in his business. He understood what had happened was is that God said it and that's it. See the Moses generation. Y'all watch this. Because when Moses was called to go and check out the land, Moses had to have 12 people to go. Joshua said, you know what? I remember what happened when he said 12 people. He said 10 of them came back with a negative report. Ten of them came to try to change my mind. Ten of them tried to let the people miss out on God. He said, but the Joshua and the Caleb generation said, if God said it, then that's it. If God said it, then we're going to take over the land. If God said it, we're going to do nothing but bust a move on the head of the devil. So Joshua generation said, I'm not going to do what Moses did. Moses got everybody in our business. Joshua said, we don't need everybody in our business. He said, I'm going to Send two people because two prophetically means establishment. He said, I'm gonna send two people because they're about to get some stuff established in this hour. Oh, Joshua yeah, generation man. understood the assignment. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Come on. They understood the assignment. And they said, We're gonna have everybody in our business. We're gonna make silent moves. Come on, somebody. We're gonna make silent moves. You'll see it on the on Facebook later when it's already done. He said, Well, I tell you then, we're gonna move silently. And I got a select couple of people that I'm gonna be talking to in this season. Because Moses messed up when he got everybody in his business. You better business. say that. You better say that. Yes. Joshua generation. Joshua generation. The next thing. Hallelujah. The Joshua generation understood the power of faith. They understood the power of faith while the majority of the people questioned God. Joshua said, no, no, no. If God said it, that's it. Mm -hmm. See, see, you got to understand that you can't be scared of what Canaan is about to bring you. You're right. You're right. See, let me tell you something. Some people, when God say, listen, this is where I'm taking you, this is where I'm going, right. some of us will turn into a Moses and say, well, God ain't got enough money. Well, uh, God, I just lost my job. But God, how is that going to happen? But uh, God, I don't understand. But well, God, and then we begin to ponder in our hearts, how in the world is this going to be? See, let me tell you something. If you have that mindset, you have just classified yourself in the Moses generation because the Moses generation was trying to make excuses and figure things out. The Joshua generation just did. They did it scared. They did it overcoming fear. They did it relying on God. They did it by tapping into faith. They did it because they understood.
understood their assignment. Yeah. And in order to understand their assignment, they had to get out of their flesh. Come on, somebody. Right. You let your flesh dictate where you go Ooh. and how you move in 2024, then you're going to miss God. Right. If you let your flesh interfere with your marriage, if you let your flesh interfere with your faith, Ooh. if you let your flesh interfere, you are going to miss God. The Joshua generation said, I can't let my flesh mess this thing up. My, my. You better say that. But I got to walk in the spirit. And in the spirit, there is faith. In the spirit, there is no doubt that God is who he said he is. The Joshua generation did it by faith. Number five, the Joshua generation had a conquering anointing. They were all in. All they wanted to do was win. Win. Right. And win, no matter what. Right. If God said it, that was it. They had a, I'm going to take over everything God said was mine mentality. Right. See, see, the, the Moses generation could only see it from afar. Well, let's tap into why they could only see it from afar. They began to mutter. And they began to complain. They began to just talk about all kinds of stuff. And then Moses got mad because they was talking so much. And Moses got mad and he started hitting stuff when God said, speak to stuff. See, the Joshua generation didn't start hitting because they were frustrated. They just started moving. Come on, y'all. See, in the middle of stuff, we begin so, to get so frustrated and get caught up in our emotions. We begin to hit people with our words. We begin to hit people with our complaints. We begin to hit people. That's, that shows us that we're moving by the flesh and not by the spirit. Joshua didn't move by the flesh. Joshua moved by the spirit. And he said, you know what? I ain't going to complain. I may not have everything to go into the promise, but because God said it, I'm going to tap into it. Yes, God. It was a faith thing for the Joshua generation. The Joshua generation. Number six was a people of the word. Watch this. The Joshua generation understood that if you're going to win, if you're going to manifest all these blessings, if, then you got to be in your word. Not only do you have to be in your word, you got to do the word. You got to meditate on the word. That's right. If you're going to win, you got to put the word to work. That's right. Oh, come on, G. Y'all got to get this. You got to put the word to work. God told Joshua that the key to his success will be that the book of the law never depart from his mouth. He said, but you need to meditate on it day and night so that you can be prosperous and be successful. And so whenever you're going through, the problem is a lot of times if you're going through financial situations, you better put a word on it. God has called me the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. He said, I'm a lender and not a borrower. He said that he, he has never seen his children forsaken. No, the righteous begging for prayer. See, a lot of times we can go to war because we don't know the word to put in the atmosphere. And then God said, if you can put the word in the atmosphere, right. you'll never lose. That's Come right. on, somebody. You'll never lose. He said, all you gotta do is put the word to work. The word will work if you work it. Come on. Y'all. He said, the word will work if you work it. A lot of times, the Joshua generation, they consider what God said. And they begin to put the word to work because they knew that the word worked. So when you're going through any situation, you need to have a scripture for that. Number seven, the Joshua generation didn't tolerate foolishness in the camp. Come on, somebody. Y'all listen. If we all live in 2024, we ain't finna tolerate foolishness. Baby, we finna get our whole life. When God told Joshua, see, this the thing was, God had already told him, he said, if you keep the word on your mouth, in your mouth, he said, you're going to win, you're going to be prosperous, you're going to be successful. And then one day, somebody said, what had happened? One day, the Israelites began to go into a small camp. And they went, they went into the small camp with just a few people because they knew they was going to win. But then how about they get their head bust to the 
the white meat and came running back and they was like, Joshua said, wait, time out. You mean to tell me we lost against them? The Joshua generation will analyze where the foolishness is at. Joshua said, no, 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 because the Lord had already made me a promise. The Lord said that, that if we keep the word with the book of the law on our lips, and we are obedient and we do what God tells us to do, we can't help but win. So something must not be right up in my house. Come on, somebody. So Joshua went to his house. Come on, y'all. And he said, okay, where is the foolishness? Because the foolishness is stopping our blessing. Come on, y'all. He said, where is the foolishness? Is it you? Is it you? Is it you? He said, we got to figure out where the foolishness is because it's stopping our blessing. We, we should have been winning by now. We should have been broke through by now. But something in this house. The Joshua generation will figure out where the foolishness is at. There was an aching in the camp. The Joshua generation had to go and identify where the aching was. Joshua said, no, no, no. He went to the Lord. He said, now, Lord, you said that as long as we did X, Y, and Z, we was going to win. And he was crying out to the Lord because he was upset. The Lord said, why is you crying out to me? He said, pick your face up, pick your lip up, and go to your house and figure out what's wrong in your house. Come on. He said, go to your house because you ain't winning because something in your house ain't right. And Joshua went to his house. He said, who? Who do who doing the foolishness? Who in here messing up our blessing? Mama. Who in here messing up our blessing? You gotta identify. You gotta be bold enough to say you messing up our blessing, bro. You messing up our house, bro. You gonna have to fix this thing, sis, because you messing up the overflow. So Joshua went to his house, and there was an ache in there. Ache said, "Yeah, it was me. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry." Ache said, "It was me. It was me. I'm so sorry. I messed up." I messed up. You know what Joshua did? He was so bold about the things of the Lord. He, the, all the people began to stone Achan. And everything that he took that the Lord told him not to take, they piled it on top of Achan. And then they put fire to him and burned him up. Joshua was not playing. I ain't telling you to go burn nobody up in your house. But you better go deal with the foolishness. You better go figure out what's stopping your blessing. You better figure out what's keeping y'all stagnant in the name of Jesus. That's right, Pastor. That's it. That's it. Joshua wasn't praying. Okay, foo foo, that's what we doing? Are oh, we finna get this thing together today? Because what we not gonna do is mess with the favor of God. What we not gonna do is mess with the overflow of God. What we not gonna do. Come on. Sit in. Sit in. This is the last thing. The Joshua generation is a generation of accomplishment. They did what the Moses generation couldn't do. The Moses generation could only see it from afar. And in our dream, a dream of a genie kind of thing. I see it, I see it, I see it. But I can't tap into it because I'm not Joshua. But what was Joshua? Joshua was fake. Joshua didn't play with the foo foo. Joshua was the one that said it. If God said it, that's it. Joshua didn't yeah, make excuses good. as to why they couldn't press in. Joshua, Joshua, Joshua. Moses made excuses. Moses did. He let the people get the best of them. They complained the whole 40 years in the wilderness. They just did so much things, even after seeing all the miracles of God. And Joshua was like, I can't be like Moses. Accomplish. God told me to accomplish. I ain't playing with Aiken. I ain't playing with you with little faith. I can't deal with disobedience. Right. I can't deal with all of that. I can't bring my past old bad habits into this. The lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, the smoking, the sipping, the drinking, the tipping, the like, like that. God said, I can't pour new wine in that old mess. Say it, say it. You want to know, but you stop getting the fool fool. The foolish things of the world. Because I can't put new wine to that. Amen, man. This is the hour for the come up. That's right. 
And the come up is going to set you up yes. for next level. A lot was released from the prophetic utterance for 2024. So even this message was prophetic. But God was saying, Josh will rise up. I need you to go. I need you to fight. I need you to win. And everybody that's standing to your feet, what you're saying is, I want to be a part of the Joshua generation. Thank you.